All right. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Water Sewer Commission meeting. Um, Tuesday, August 24th. Uh, before we get into uh, the meeting, I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome, everybody, on... Uh, that's uh, dialed in remotely. Um, we'll get things started with uh, Superintendent Update, please. Thank you. Go back to uh, last, last Wednesday, the 18th. Uh, Sewer Department responded to an alarm uh, for a failed wastewater storage grinder down at our top street station. Um, after a lengthy process, we were able to determine that it was actually the electric motor on the grinder that had failed. Um, set up food in and outside the wet well, pulled the, the failed part out. Uh, thankfully, we had one here um, on the shelf, brand new, ready to go. Um, as I know we have talked about before, limitations that we have for having spare parts for the sewer department. Um, typically, we'd like to see additional parts, the grinder portion, which unfortunately is in the flow itself. Yep. Um, sometimes they can be rebuilt or used bearings for parts if you have to do an emergency repair. But with uh, just the one building that is shared by the water and sewer, we don't have many options for used parts, regardless of how clean they are uh, inside there. So we do have a plethora of new parts. This motor was one of them. Um, that just happened to get lucky. That's all it was this time around. Can we order something to replace that? Do we have something in stock? Already the ordered. Um, it's about 2000 So you see that bill coming up probably within about three months. That's how much the delay there is on that part. Okay. So, um, um, yep, we were definitely order it. Knock on Mansfield's door to see if they had a spare if we didn't have one. So again, uh, we'll see my request in the Capitol coming up to the sewer building. Because we cannot do without certain parts. Now that the delays that we're seeing for many of the typical normal items is weeks or months. So that just adds to the frustration of uh, yep. what we have here, but uh, limited storage. We have some parts uh, like uh, the gear drive and uh, the grinder portion itself that we have to store in our containers out back or outside to do our best to talk to them. But uh, that obviously limits uh, the life again of that part. Uh, eventually, there's a big post of moisture and some of the and all that. But uh, thankfully, we had that back up and running. Took the better part of the day. We did have to haul an electrician in. Get him to go down into the, into the wet well to uh, make the final fact just there for this type of But uh, that's thankfully been running. There's not been uh, any more issues down there. We can't say 100%. Um, during the summer, we had some issues with that where we had some nuisance alarms that came in. And we'd show up, and it was the fault, but there was no ferry. There was something that may have been leading up to the failure of the motor. Um, it's not worth them the motor off the test. They may take it for a four just in the case, but uh, we'll let them determine that one. Uh, how old are these four pumps that they have? The motor part on that is newer than the grinder portion, which is actually the seed that the yeah. grinder solid. Um, that's, that's relatively old. That's probably going on 10 years older or older, so we'll get our life out of it, especially in such a corrosive environment there. Um, that, whole, that whole unit. Is, is that, uh, how much is that approximately? The uh, motor portion that is 2,000 to 2,500 yep. is a gear drive or a lower gear drive assembly that reduces the torque. Um, that's a few thousand. And then we have the, the actual um, Muffin Monster portion of it with the shears. Um, I don't remember the last time we purchased one of them. I think we made many repairs on existing ones that we have. I'm just curious, I'm sure it's not, but I just I, curious. I would not be surprised. Total cost is probably between eight and ten thousand um, dollars. It's a uh, necessary evil to keep any large solids out of your pump. You know, it's not something you can do away with you know entirely. You can go probably a weekend with it, you know, be it offline and, and be extremely cautious. But uh, I don't know if that was one thing we had in the works for the upgrade there from yeah. South Street so that we could Take the motor off the list. Yeah. Um, so thankfully, not the wood. That was going to be in the next. That was the next round. Well, we just, yeah. um, so we'll jump from from sewer over to water. Uh, yesterday morning, 
Target portion from hybrids on some of our dead end roads, uh, New Street and Richmond Avenue, to be specific. Um, okay. water quality and, and uh, disinfection of the drills, we noticed uh, they were getting a little bit lower than we wanted to see in those dead ends. The water, you know, we don't want it to go stagnant. So, uh, New Street, we were able to flush that uh, with not one call, unfortunately. Richmond Avenue did generate a few phone calls on North Western. So, we went back to the original first call. Leapfrog all the way down, hold it to the end. Uh, it was a little bit longer than we wanted to, but uh, the, the end result was, was better water quality for the majority of the customers in that area, not just the dead end. We're pretty limited on what we can do with water um, right now for a multitude of different reasons. You know, the wells that obviously we're doing some replacements on, and it just so happened that this week um, we started the 48 hour pumping test that replacement well for the day. So we had to uh, stabilize the aquifer before we could perform these tests to get a baseline. So we had to flow wells five and four down to a minimal speed just enough to run the plant. They well take offline while they perform this 48 hour pump to waste test. Um, so we could simulate what it would be like if the wells were completely locked, but you know, we don't have that option here. Uh, so thankfully the storm missed us that was Number one big concern, the timing couldn't have been any worse. Yep. Um, and then obviously with the, the flushing that uh, you know, took a little longer than expected, you know, we were very cautious. We purposely turned the boosters off so we didn't have any spikes or anything else around. Yeah, so we had a coordinated event. There were a few people that were that um, actually some of our, our older customers in town who don't use social media or the web pages, so they were concerned that they weren't notified. And, um, I spoke to a couple of them. Uh, John also spoke to another customer. We uh, actually asked them how they would recommend to be notified in the future. Um, they were unaware of the North Alerts program that uh, John has recently been able to get access to. Um, they don't follow social media or anything like that, so they actually prefer the old-fashioned method of somebody knocking on their door. It, it's not a typical response that we would have, and we definitely don't know who would or would not want that type of answer. Um, it, it's not common. We do know... What about board? What about flush boards? There's something uh, like we have These people said that they thing. don't go out very often because of their age. Uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty limited on what yeah. we had to offer to these people. I did suggest to one person um, who still actually has the landline um, that Norton Alerts could possibly be used. You know, they would be able to select what notifications they wanted. And, uh, you know, they would receive a phone call. I don't know how you can distinguish between what alerts you want, what times of day you want them. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want them coming in in the middle of the night if it doesn't pertain to your area. Okay. Um, they were going to see if they could speak to a family member about figuring out how to sign up for it. Um, it wouldn't be feasible to do anything through the mail, would it? No. It, it, some of these things uh, come up timing, and the timing yeah, isn't there. Quick um, if there was a response to a dirty water call, and we do respond and pull a hydrant, that can generate additional calls to yeah. change the flow in that area. Uh, and again, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes to where it's affected. I mean, we flowed the end of Richardson Avenue and it affected a mile and a half away on North Worcester Street. Where in the past, we've performed these same operations and we haven't generated one phone call in any of them. It's just different timings, different sequence of events, different ways that people are home using water, you know, um, all changes the flow rate inside the main and kind of things stir up. You know, something that's just been sitting there and has the perfect calm for months on end. You know, it's not a regular flushing program. We're, we're doing these dead end mains uh, sporadically when we have water available or when we notice a water quality um, concern or a complaint that we respond to. So we're very limited on how we can reach everybody. But obviously, we, we do our best when we have more notices out now than we have ever had, yeah. but uh, it, it's not 100%. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. Is that you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I sound like a chair. I'm not sure if you guys had any chance uh, to notice uh, just before the meeting, I sent over a couple copies of documents 
gentlemen, there was only so many 40 bees that are allowed in town that come out, and I thought he was one of the last ones that was coming in. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken if it was him or not, or, maybe, or, or whoever, uh, it would be on I thought, and then I just see him coming up all the time, and I just, I thought we only had so many that we could allow to the community. Is that true? So there's a minimum threshold that you're supposed to be. Where, you know, somebody comes in with a 40B and you only have 1% and you're supposed to get a 5%, then it's hard to deny them. Once you meet the minimum 5%, then I think um, they don't have as much power over the process. Oh, okay. Once so the town as a whole, the, the, the minimum, minimum, the closer you get to you that get threshold, to it, then eventually you're going to be there and then you don't qualify for it. Then, and then you have okay. more. And I don't know exactly how that works, but that's. Oh, yeah. So, so it's dependent on the number of them, the size of them. It, it comes down to number of units, yeah. I mean, I can find more information about that, about that through the uh, director of planning to see where we are with our percent. Um, basically, this gentleman here is interested in making the connections, knowing that the work and the road moratorium is imminent on Route 123. Uh, that's how this all started. It started off with the water connection. Now, he wanted to move forward and pay his his, uh, his agreed upon rate for the two connections to get it across. And, you know, um, like, that, like I explained in the email there, that that's one of the steps, but there's many steps that have to be taken before that. Typically, we would see, you know, the board would see and review a final set of, of engineering claims, most likely, and have they have them six, five, six years old. Those are, those are old. I don't think they could be final plans, and that's what they're going to go with, but we haven't been told that they are. Um, you know, we would want to see a separation of the utilities, both water and sewer, 
because Stewart we still hasn't been agreed to how that's going to get it worked out. Yep. Um, so we could definitely move forward with the water portion of it. And they could bring, once there's an agreement in place and order of conditions of peer review, um, we could allow them to bring two water connections across the road. Um, I would recommend in the order of conditions that there be a three-way T installed at the end of that lateral. So there's a fire hydrant there, it would remain active because we don't want to install anything dry in case for some reason this does stall. Um, it could be used for fire protection and obviously for future development. Yep. Um, the sewer is a complete different set of questions um, where they've requested to put a private line down the side of the road, which I can't find any reason to allow that. Um, you know, so you got anything to just you're asking for trouble? It's not that horrible. Um, you know, from the fact that many people don't don't know that they're there, the owners don't maintain them. They definitely do not mark them when the big state is called. It's, you know, you create a, a world of problems for anybody trying to do anything out there. Um, so I know this person did want to come before the board at one point uh, to discuss the project. <laughs> Just didn't know um, how you wanted him to invite him. If you wanted to <coughs> wait for a final set of plans. I definitely would like to look at something for you. Yeah, before we, yeah, we, we bring everybody in. Yeah. Just going I don't want to, I hate to try to make a... Time. Yeah. I realize they have to spend a little money on that, but it's, 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 nothing's really changed that much. You know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, is it? Update those. I'm sure it would be a peer review, as was recommended before with other projects, and then the order of conditions, and once that's all in place, then we could make a determining factor if there were numbers that were talked about six years ago or still agreed to, or if they're legally binding because it was something that was agreed to and there's not an ongoing project. But so that's, that's down the road. So I will start off like making sure he's aware that we will go with the... The, uh, the moratorium that the state's putting on the road, mm -hmm. that starts when exactly? Typically, final phase, right? you would see that after the final phase. I'm hearing that's going to happen possibly nine months to a year prior to paving because they want the road to settle because of the amount of excavation that's been done. Okay. And when that happens, mm -hmm. that goes into effect, no more work on the road. No more work except for an emergency. For how long? Uh, that five road is, it could be five, five years. years. Um, yeah, I think it's five years. It really depends. Well, what I'm getting at is this guy, if he... Okay, he puts his water line or whatever, and that's it. And then the moratorium hits. Right. The sewer issue is going out the window. It's not even right. Right. That's even thought about that. There was a provision in the wording there. It looks like they gave him two options. Yeah. Um, one was a combined septic, and, and the other was to uh, connect to municipal sewer if available following the rules regulations and all that. This actually a quick question I had on that lot. I was looking at the map of it and it looks like I guess it'd be the northeast corner of that lot. It pretty much rides right up against that main sewer pipe. Yeah. 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 Would that be an option for him? Not for anything in the road and just have his whole sewer go. It would require a heavy look at the plan to see if it could be done. Yeah, this was just me looking at right. the yeah, snap real quick. I don't know my survey or Yeah, but it looks like top, yep. that top corner of that lot. It's very possible. I mean, there's a chance it would probably have, have a pump system there to reject it to that line. Yeah. I believe the elevation goes up based on the... Yeah, I don't know what the land is yeah. like there. So yeah, as you, as you head from East Main and you turn North Washington Street, you actually start to go up. Yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah, I would assume that the tracks follow the same grade, and it would be a gradual slope. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the acceptor well was laid based on grade, or if it was just you know, at the specific depth. Even though all that. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's a viable option instead of going in the road. If, if Mansfield would allow them to uh, yeah, go there, there's that as well. Um, and if there isn't, it would, it would get him by any issues with the moratorium on the road, right? For sure. Yeah. It, it was, they may have options. Well, if they can get that easement too, that's done. I know that we looked at that with the water, the water loop. They just ran right through and. Yeah, I'm not sure. We could loop right through. Yeah, neighborhood that's not the If that's not, I mean, it's just. Spitballing, just seeing like Tim said, just right, planting it. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason we asked for a full set of plans is to 
to get a chance to look at things uh, other than, unfortunately, what we've provided to you guys, same as me, is the electronic copy. I mean, it's great to zoom in on one little spot, but you can't get the overall view. Yeah. So that was six years ago when they came in with all this? Uh, I think it was I'll bring him up to speed on, on what he's going to require. And a uh, couple more things. Um, we've got a few flow tests left. Uh, we put this one off for a little while. This is uh, a full fire pump flow test uh, for New England Ice Cream, 222 Mansfield Ave. Uh, it's scheduled for Thursday, the 26th at 10 a.m. Um, as I mentioned in the past, we're going to utilize these type of flow tests to help flush the system. So we're, even though we're limited with water, once we stir that area up, there's the potential we may have to flush. We're going to use it to our advantage. We're actually, once the test is completed, we're going to run our booster station that's down in that same corner of town and perform a, a light flush in that corner of town. We're sure we pull everything towards the town line and discharge it. So it will be uh, you know, a benefit for, for all in that area. You know, obviously, it'll make sure the water's clear before we leave, but we're also going to remove any stagnant water that could be created um, from our own games. Now that Rose Brothers is closed out, we haven't seen activity down at PPC. For the most part, those names really don't move that much. So yeah. We use this. This will stop them. The moving process, we can isolate a few days and create a few dead ends down there. So that will be uh, Thursday the 26th. Um, this is week after, Tuesday the 31st, we have a smaller sprinkler flow test. That's actually uh, 108 West Main Street. Um, very small, two inch drain line test. What business is that? I don't recall the name. Um, it's, it's directly across from the old Central Donuts, across from Freeman. There's two parcels there. Okay. It's a medical, yeah. It's a medical building. Okay. Medical building. okay. Um, that's the apartment there. Yeah. That's been done multiple times. No issues there. We just work with the. Uh, the fire technicians there to make sure that line runs clear because it is at the back of the property, so it does run a little bit longer than others. But we've had no issues there. And we'll jump over to, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, the rate testing started yesterday for well 6A. Um, we were able to we adjust our levels, get everything where we needed to stabilize the aquifer. And uh, so far, it's been very promising. We're, we're halfway through as of uh, 3 o'clock today. And uh, we're holding steady at 600 gallons a minute. Great. So That's great. This is the second test that we've performed at this same location because the first pump that was there reached its maximum path. So we didn't want to provide information to CDC <coughs> with estimated amount, even though we could have calculated it numerically. But we wanted to provide them actual data so that uh, there is no chance of them withdrawing any of our rate permit at that location. Okay. So that's where we're at for that. And uh, we have promising results. We won't have water quality results back for a while. But to see the yield is, is kind of the important part of it. Yeah, the water quality can be cleaned up by the plant. Yeah. Good news. Can't hide me fast enough. Yep. This is the next one, news. That's about what I have. Uh, I think you might have some updates to you from Tara, or is that probably. Um, there wasn't, and she just mentioned that the 48-hour test is right in the middle of it right now, so, so if you think there was anything else, certainly not, it's necessarily needed to be updated right now. Very good. Wanted to be an update, absolutely. Um, let's start with uh, Cobb Street. So I wasn't here last week. You were? I reported at the meeting. I was not here. It's a meeting. I couldn't be here. Right. <laughs> Um, so we had the bid opening um, right before the meeting. Uh, we had six bidders. That was on August 12th with the bid opening. The low bidder uh, is Fall River Electrical. With a bid price of $156,199. We had them uh, at one of our other locations. Yeah, we were happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So we've, we're familiar with them. And we've, uh, we've recently done some reference checks on them for other projects, so we've worked with them quite a bit. Um, so we've submitted, you know, we've gone through the reference checks, um, and we are recommending um, award of the contract, of the contract to follow. Excellent. Um, 
So I think if the commission's in agreement, we should probably take a motion and, and vote um, your intent to award um, the call for the other concrete uh, home station upgrades. So, okay. Okay. Um, I would like to go ahead and make a motion to award the contract for the Cobb Street upgrades to Fall River Electric. Is that right? Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it passes. That's great news, too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Frank has... Oops, we, we, don't have, have, we don't need to sign anything. Do you don't need to sign okay. anything. So Frank has a letter that so he'll send off the intent to award. And I think... Um, is that just the your signature? Right? Yeah, it's a line yeah. So Frank will um, send that off and simultaneous once we know that you've sent the letter, we'll contact them and start the process of getting contracts and insurance and everything together um, so that we can get the contracts for you guys ready for, okay. for execution. You want to do it? Okay. So, that's great. So we'll move forward with contract execution, then it'll be notice to proceed and the pre-construction conference. And the biggest thing is the lead time on the generator, which yeah. is which is oh, sure. right yeah. now. Yeah. It's it's three three months. Sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, we'll try and move as quickly as we can to get it awarded, get them to get us the shop guards so that we move the shop. Okay. And then we'll wait. But we'll at least be in process. Wheels are in motion. So that's that. On Cobb Street. Um, we're going to the I wanted to bring these back to the case where you had given us three copies of the water and the sewer annual agreement. Yeah, this is the other. Those are the water ones. Parody was. Yeah, so, uh, West Main Street, um, I have, I think at the, the last meeting, Frank, you presented the, the balancing change order. I have the signed copy of the balancing change order. I don't know if this is not super critical, but I don't know if this went through uh, James. Or not yet, or if you've seen that, we can, I can follow up with you on that tomorrow. Yeah. Huh? I don't believe it came back. Okay. Um, so that's what the lead's already signed? Yep. 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 So you guys yep. voted it, I yep. signed it. Um, so we're done with them. And they submitted their final pay rec. Um, about $165,000, which is the final change order that you would approve and the payment. Um, so th you had this at the last meeting, Frank. I, I haven't seen a signed copy of this one. If you got this, this signed last week, I think. So mm -hmm. when we met beforehand, you had it. Um, pay application number seven. So with this, um, we can process. This is the last thing that will go through SRF. Um, based on cash flow, so we got the SRF reimbursement that we had sent in, which was covered for both the previous KREC, um, a pay estimate I assume has been paid. Based on my math, they should have enough money in the account right now to even pay this one. We just will get the money from SRF, um, and we'll have it to pay down the debt. She should have enough money to pay for the new process. So is this do we know, is, is this one being processed right now, or is that the last? 17 was signed at the last one. With so the it's signed, so has it been sent to the town hall, or? Uh, I'm just curious where it's at. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, yeah. That went up yeah, right after the meeting, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll need a signed copy in order to get the SRF um, forward. And that's all great. And then as part of the final SRF reimbursement request, we had to close things out with DEP. Um, so Frank, you had signed a bunch of paperwork for us um, so that we can close that out. Their construction project completion certificates at the very beginning of the project, the commission voted and authorized Frank right. as the representative. So we can just sure. sign all this stuff. Yep. So this yep. is a yep. certification that the project is complete. Checklists, you know, they, they want you to certify that you have the as built, you have the O and M manuals, you have all the records that you need. Um, so we've done that, uh, and then they have this fiscal sustainability plan, which is basically just an inventory 
of all the equipment that you've now added and your intent to, to make it. They, they give you all this money and you're not just going to, you know, turn your head and walk away and not look at it ever again. That's not what it is. So we submitted all this paperwork um, to SRF. I'm frankly talking to you on that and they acknowledge that they have it and they, you know, can now submit the last payment. They won't give you the last payment. Until, so they thought they'll prove it. But anyway, I think that's it. And that will be the part of the whole thing. That's it. I think that's all I have. Thanks, David. There is one item yeah. left. Um, this is discussion only. This was uh, a beam that came in. No problem with regards to sewer uh, West Main Street. Okay. Um, we've spoken multiple times with the previous owner of this location. I spoke to an interested party um, who was mentioning they may purchase the property. I believe it was just sold. Um, it was explained to them. Uh, they both, for some reason, had the idea that uh, it was based on connections that were left to the property while they were being assessed um, two units. Okay. And we explained to them based on previous water usage over two consecutive years, um, it's a commercial property, and that's how the EDU was calculated. Uh, okay. uh, so they still decided to put this through before the board. Um, it is not on the agenda, so I don't believe we can have any votes on it tonight, but it is just for open discussion right now. We can post that on the next agenda. This is them one to because they're using more of a copy. It's just to make an abatement. They, they felt that uh, they should be charged less. Should be charged less. I with that request. I requested that they have two service lines to the property. They think they're being assessed based, based on, on service, service lines. lines. Right. They didn't bring up anything about consumption. Okay. They didn't bring up anything about two, two, lines. two service lines. Two water service lines? Two water service lines. Yeah. Really? So I think when we tried to explain to them that it was based on water consumption, Mm -hmm. They turned that into uh, water service. In fact, yeah. they're two units. They're thinking they're getting built on two water service. But that has nothing to do with it. And is it does he have, does he have a, a potable water and a fire load? No, is that what he is? These water. are two potable loads? Well, it used to be another yeah. building there. Yeah. Two yeah. Another oh, building. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? There used to be two buildings on that site. Next, next to Honeydew, there was another building. Two buildings on the site. And he's using both of those services? No, no, no. no, that's where the confusion comes from. There's, there's one that's abandoned. There's one that's active. Yeah, but that has, that's really that's yeah. kind of a moot point. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of confusion yeah. with the way this is, is worded. Yeah. Honeydew doors opened in Norton back in July of 1980, and I remember the Honeycomb Dairy being there, and they've been in. Is this for 41 years? Can you believe that? I a can. long time? Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so we have frequent calls, unfortunately, with some confusion of how they're assessed. And um, some of them are from the amount of connections that they know are left for their property. Uh, some of them, uh, like this one, water services that might go to the property. Pretty simple to explain it, but it can be confusing if you don't understand the terms that are being used. Yeah. Yeah, they at least blend connections mm -hmm. with units. With units, yeah. So, so the way I see it, he's, he's totally basing this off the, the two water services. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the end. So that's what he's thinking is 32,000 is because he will one year Yes, but it's not. It has his Y's divided by the... We'll put that formally on that. I thought I had written an email somewhere where they mentioned about water usage because of the coffee that they made. That was, enough, yeah. so was, they, that was, was their original. That was a separate thing or? Original. Same was, place yeah. and that was their original. Is that this, was that the previous owners? Yes. Yeah. That was the owners. These are the same people. Okay. 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 
He's a school of the previous songs because they're the ones that have to play. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. you went Bob Green Death on this thing. Yeah, I think it's going by Kevin Worrell. Right? I think, um, I mean, I did try and make a case that one of the videos is the one that's fine. It doesn't have to be called everybody tells me. The fair and equal assessment is done by the previous guy. Commercial property that used to be here. We gotta just get him on the agenda and tell him to set him straight, basically. Well, we'll put it on the agenda, give him a chance to, to call in or physically show up and explain to him um, the answer to the correct question. And, uh, we'll have to sign off on that. Yeah. And so that'll be the next, the next meeting. Great. Um, any leeway on what a good time is to have uh, that open house with the guys? Honestly, we haven't had much okay, discussion about it. Um, right, I guess there, there was some concern of the majority of the general public being able to attend. Um, obviously, we talked about the parking issue that sure. we have down there. Yep. Um, a few safety concerns when <coughs> people aren't experienced being in those areas. So we'd have to look at doing some type of safety, yep. pulling things off. Yep. Um, or if we wanted to, possibly two separate um, one I was just thinking that if we did two or three, you know, we invited certain areas and found which one to keep the numbers. I mean, I was thinking more of a um, town uh, dignitaries uh, right. first, um, you know, or, or we could do it all at once. I mean, it's, it's still up in the air. I mean, I don't. Well, I, I, I have a lot of people that I've talked to that. Um, that would like to see it, okay. but um, I don't foresee this being extremely well attended. That's just my opinion. The ones we've had, just comparing uh, when we went the first one, we had a few townspeople. Most of them were the dignitaries we're talking about, just like people and whatnot. Yeah, I think the biggest concern is the. Uh it's not a very easy site to access. Correct. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, we have to be very cautious about what vehicles we allow into that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, where it's right now, it's only approved vehicles, so having people park on the street and walk in, as it's probably not the most popular option, it's probably the best option. Uh, How far back is it? Well, okay. four miles. Yeah. By the time you walk down the road and, and take a left and come back to the plant, um, unfortunately, that might limit some of our people. I'm getting in, but uh, I think it's probably the safest option. We definitely don't want somebody going off the edge of the road, trying to park on the side of the road, or damaging the vehicle. Yeah, I agree. Um, it is still something we should do. All right, well, we'll talk more about it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, um, the rebate program that we had with, um, I'm not going to say we have. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Okay. Uh, we only saw you a week ago. I don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think discussion um, was there. I know we talked about doing something in September. Um, I think we should maybe we should put that on the agenda for for the next meeting to make a more issuance of it. I know there was some dollar amount that we discussed. So yeah. Um, it was only going to fit certain criteria, certain filters, certain right. amounts. Um, yep. I think we can get that hashed out by the next meeting. Okay. Because so once we have everything in order, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's going to work. I'd like to go in front of the um, select board and okay. present that to them. So they'll and I think the next meeting. Okay. There might be a conflict with that for you. What's that? The date of the next meeting. If it's the second and fourth of the next month. It's my birthday? You are not here on the second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were in New Hampshire. Oh, good point. Are we going to do the 14th and the 28th? I don't know. Well, maybe I'll do If we go and space it further out, I will have to meet up with you guys to sign some bills, but that's not. Not a problem. No problem doing that. We can do it on the 6th. The 6th and the 21st. 
because we're here, obviously. Yep. And uh, uh, we're yeah, here. Yeah, we're here. 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 We're Right. You'll be determined. Yep. In person. I'm very confident, Pete. Yep. Hopefully it'll be in person. Be in person. And get activated and we got that. The wound's good. All right, uh, anything else, uh, anybody? And I'm hoping that the beaming will be in person, right? We're gonna try. What? It needs to be in person. Oh, yeah. And on TV. Yeah. We love that. I got more of a face for radio. Yeah. You do. <laughs> All right. Uh, your favorite motion, Jim? Good. All right. I move to adjourn the meeting. I move to second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. <clears throat> yep. And then I'm on my way to the Norton Media Center for the pit time.